I know that you know that you should be posting on social media, that you should be getting more followers, getting more engagements. But do you know why? Do you know the actual impact social media is having on your business? Outside of simply pleasing the algorithm, whatever that really means, what does getting a bunch of likes and a bunch of followers and a bunch of engagements actually do for your bottom line? That's exactly what we're gonna talk about in today's episode. And if you want the short answer to the question in the title, which metrics should you be paying attention to? The answer is, it depends. Okay, so first let's talk about why the answer is it depends. Well, it depends because there are so many different functions that social media has or can have. If I am an airline on Twitter, I probably am not focusing so much on marketing and sales and conversions. I'm probably going to be more focused on customer service or brand sentiment, paying attention to what customers are saying about us or what people on Twitter are saying about us, what people are thinking about us, you know, how positive or negative is the sentiment and the brand outlook. And I'm going to be helping those people who complain that they lost their bags and their kid can't sit next to them and their seatbelt didn't work and all these different things. Those are the things that people go to an airline's Twitter account for a lot of the time. If I am an e-commerce store on Instagram, well, my goal is probably to sell product. So I am going to be paying attention to how many people are clicking over, how many people are commenting and asking questions and sending us DMs for order support to get them through to that point of purchase successfully. So those are just a couple of examples, but those are two wildly different objectives or goals with social media. Social media can also be helpful for brand awareness. It can be helpful for engagement or connection with an existing community. If I have a Facebook group or a Facebook page even for a local community organization, that's free. We don't sell tickets. We just have, you know, members come in virtually or in person. My goal is going to be more engagement focused. Like I want those people to know about the events that we have. I want to educate them. I want to have relationships with them. So they want to keep coming back and being a part of the group, right? So it's not just a one size fits all. Hey, the answer is clicks or the answer is likes, right? Like there's not a one size fits all. What I will tell you is bigger is not always better. And it can be really tempting as a social media manager, as a marketer, as a business owner to just focus on growing everything, right? We need more followers. We need more likes. We need more this, more that. And yeah, of course, growth in general is probably a good indicator that you're doing the right thing. You want to make sure that you are focusing on growing those core metrics that are the most important to your business. What I mean by this is I know I could probably get a lot of followers, but would they be people who are interested in marketing? And in turn, would they actually buy my products or services? Would I actually be making more money or would I just be inflating what they call a vanity metric or a metric that looks really good but doesn't really mean anything? Same thing with puppies. People love puppies. I could buy a puppy and I could post my puppy 24 seven, but would people care about marketing if they followed a puppy account? I don't know. Now, Hey, if you want to get clever, maybe there are ways to turn the puppy account into a marketing account and like talk about marketing with your puppy, but I'm not savvy enough to do that. So I'm going to focus on engaging my existing audience and growing an audience in the smaller niche that maybe isn't going to be quite as attracted to those big flashy things because that's going to be more meaningful to me and my bottom line. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of goals. We're going to start by looking at a marketing funnel or thinking about a marketing funnel. The top of the marketing funnel is awareness. So this is the first goal that most businesses are going to be paying attention to is we need people to know who we are. I need you to know who I am. I need you to watch my videos, listen to my things, whatever I I need to get on your radar, in other words. So at that stage, you might be focused on follower count, yes, because that means people are seeing your account, and not only are they seeing your account, but they're actually saying, I'm interested in this person enough to wanna see their their posts in my feed on a regular basis. So if you are at that stage of the marketing journey, or if you are just focused on awareness overall, meaning maybe you're a content creator, Maybe you are a small business who's looking to get known, to get a following in your local area. 
then followers might be something that you do track, but it's not everything. Keep that in mind. Another metric that you may pay attention to is reach. Reach refers to the number of accounts that actually saw your account or your post. You can think of it basically as, you know, how, how far did your post or your account stretch and reach and find people? This can be really valuable if you're looking for volume. Again, maybe I'm a community organization and we're having a free event, a free launch event, if you will. And we want as many people as possible to come to that event, to be aware of that event. Well, we're going to look at reach. How far did our post reach? Sometimes we talk about our hashtags effective, right? This is a metric that hashtags can really help with. They can increase your reach because people might be looking in those hashtags or location tags. Again, especially if you have a local specific strategy, hashtags or location tags can really help increase your reach. Now, another awareness focused metric that you might pay attention to is impressions. Impressions is often confused with reach. They're very similar metrics, but they mean something a little bit different. So reach refers to the number of people or the number of accounts that saw your post or your content or your account, whereas impressions refers to the number of times that it was seen. So it's very similar, but usually your impressions are going to be a little bit higher than reach. And here's why. I'm sure you've seen an ad multiple times in your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed or wherever. I certainly have. I get ones that follow me around and then I click the little dots and I say, I don't want to see this because I've seen it too many times and it's irrelevant. Let's say that I see a furniture ad three times. It's the same ad. I see it three times. That social media manager would go back to the report and they would jot down reach one because I'm the one account or the one person, the one set of eyes who saw it, but the impressions that would be tracked would be three because I would have seen it three times different times. Yeah. Let's say that you are getting a hundred impressions and two reach. You're reaching two people with a hundred impressions and they're still not coming to the event. They're still not clicking. They're still not buying. What that's going to signal to me is either I'm targeting the wrong people, you know, the wrong people are seeing it. They're just not interested or maybe the messaging is off. It's not super compelling. It's not super interesting. So maybe I need to go back to the drawing board with my copy or my creative decisions. The goal is that you want people to see that one post and, you know, immediately take action if there is an action to be taken, especially when it comes to ads, right? So that's awareness. If your goal is I want to be seen, pay attention to those metrics. Now, once you get some followers, you get some eyeballs on your account, what should you be paying attention to? Next, well, then you're going to move into the engagement phase of the marketing funnel. And again, you might start at the engagement phase. For example, if you were my social media manager, if I just hired you, I would probably tell you that this is the phase that I want to focus on. I have a good size following, but I really want my existing followers to just be bigger advocates for the brand, if you will. I want to activate my following a little bit. I want them to engage with me a little bit more, communicate with me a little bit more. That's probably what I would tell you. So engagement focused metrics, some of the most common ones are going to be likes, comments, shares, saves. I think these are all pretty self-explanatory. I think we all know what a like is on social media, share, retweet, that kind of thing. But here's kind of a breakdown of what they all mean. A like, I would say, if I had to weight these, that's probably the lowest, like, that's the, the lowest bar, right? Because it's very passive. It's something that people do almost robotically at this point. You know, there are certain accounts that I follow that I'm probably just going to like most of their posts because I like that artist or I like that creator or whatever. It's not a strong indicator of how well your content is performing in a lot of cases, but it's better than nothing. Of course, that's the bar. Comments, I think, can be a lot more valuable because people are actually doing a little bit of work. They're actually creating a little bit on their own, if you will. This is something that I like to strive for when I work with a client who maybe does have a good following. Maybe they get a lot of likes on their content is I try to generate more comments. That's kind of a starting point for me just by asking questions to my audience by, you know, encouraging people to talk back just because they think it kind of helps activate those folks. And I'm sure it probably tells the powers that be on the social platforms and the algorithms that this person is actually genuinely interested in the content. 
So something that I find helpful to encourage more comments is by asking a very simple question. A mistake I see a lot of people make is they'll ask like a very deep, meaningful question. Like, hey, you know, here's what I think the meaning of life is. What do you think the meaning of life is? And I mean, I I can't answer that question in a sentence, right? I need like a whole book to talk about that. So a lot of times when you ask questions like that, people will just skip over it. They'll be like, oh, that's way too hard. Or maybe they'll save it and they'll say, I'm going to come back to this. And then they never actually do. But instead, you could ask a question like, do you prefer to dress up or keep it casual when you go out? I can answer that in one word, really casual, dress up, or maybe even I could use an emoji to answer that question. So you want to think really simple, really easy. You can still gather some valuable feedback that way, but it's not going to be such a huge labor for your audience. I try to do the same thing on YouTube. It doesn't always work quite as well. But if I think back, one of the most successful videos comment wise for me recently, I asked if you could explain your brand in one word, right? One word. I'm not asking for like your whole elevator pitch, your whole unique value proposition. I'm just asking For one word, some people wrote things like feminine or fun or educational or informative or cool, interesting, right? Compelling. Like there are so many different just one word answers. It was super easy for people to comment. Shares is another one that I would say is a lot more high intent than likes or even comments. If you are willing to share something with a friend, that means you really like it or even better yet, share it with your entire community. Yeah, that means you're like a a big fan of the content. So this is also something that I try to encourage people to do. My approach to shares is a lot less heavy handed because I have found people are not going to share something just because you ask them to. I might try to remind you in the podcast, like, hey, if you found this valuable, like, why don't you consider sharing it with a friend? Sure. But I try not to hammer people over the head with it because that's a big ask for people. If you're recommending me, if you're recommending my show, my content, whatever, like I don't take that lightly and I know nobody else does. So I think what you can do to generate more shares is just create content that is more valuable, that is more interesting, that is more helpful to people. I also think that content that is very visually compelling and, you know, just easily digestible in just one quick glance tends to get shared more than often, especially on platforms like Instagram. And then lastly, saves is another one that's very similar to shares. I don't ask people to save my content, but it is a great metric to look at. And you can't look at it on all platforms, but you definitely can on Instagram. You can on TikTok. These are big indicators to the algorithms that people really like you. They like you enough to want to come back to your content, which in turn is probably going to get them to come back to your account overall and see new posts that you create. So it can be very valuable. So create good content and listen to the questions that your audience is asking, pay attention to what they want and create content that fills that gap. And lastly, if you want to make more sales, of course, we all probably want to make more sales, right? Like that's why we're on social media. We want to sell tickets. We want to sell products. We want to sell courses. We want to sell services, something. So first I want you to pay attention to what that one thing is. Is it a checkout page on your website? Is it booking a call? Is it um, signing up to a newsletter? Like figure out where that end point is going to be. Because at that point, once social media gets you there, it's kind of the next the next job, right? It's the job of the website. It's the job of the sales person. So important to note that in most cases, that's going to be a click over to a website. So if my goal is sales, I'm paying attention to how much traffic I'm driving to my website. And for me, this is the primary metric that I measure in my business is traffic. Traffic indicates how well the business does overall, because I know that I'm pretty good at closing on a phone call, on a discovery call. And I also know that my landing pages for my digital products should be converting for me. And if they're not, if we're driving a lot of traffic and we're not seeing a lot of conversions or actual sales, then that's a problem with the landing page in most cases. It's usually not a problem with the social content. I'll tell you when that second point can be true though, is if I'm driving the wrong people over to my website. So if that were to be the case, if I was driving a ton of traffic over to my course website, let's say, and nobody was buying, then I might go back to my social media analytics and I might say, okay, a lot of the traffic that we're driving is very, very young. And I love my young people. (laughs) 
don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on you. But if you're like in college or in high school, you probably don't have much money, if any, to spend on online courses, especially if they're a little bit higher ticket. So maybe I need to focus less on TikTok and I need to focus more on LinkedIn, where I know that professionals, you know, young professionals, older professionals even tend to hang out who maybe have some of that extra income to spend on a course. So it can sometimes be the job of social to play around, to do some extra digging into analytics, to make sure that your ideal client is matching up with what the website says. Same thing. If I am a social media manager for a lingerie company and I'm seeing like nothing but men come over to the website, well, yeah, of course, a small amount of men may be buying lingerie, but in most cases I want to be targeting women. So how can I gear my social posts more towards women? Is there a platform that I should be on that is more female focused, like maybe Pinterest, maybe Facebook, maybe Instagram, instead of posting a bunch of tweets or instead of posting, maybe it's the style of posts is just more appealing to the male gaze than the female gaze, right? So these are all important things to keep in mind. But at the end of the day, if the goal is sales, I'm trying to get people over to the point of purchase, which is a click, right? So I hope this helped to break down some of the key insights, the key metrics that you may want to pay attention to for your online business. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast platforms, please take a second to rate and review the show. If you don't mind, it helps so very much. And hey, yeah, if you want to share this episode or share any of my episodes with a friend, speaking of shares and saves, please do. Uh, It really helps grow the community and enable me to create this content for free every single week. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you in the next one. Bye.